Good morning and welcome to your first Biology 102 Tea Time. The point of these mini lectures is to give you a short overview of the content so that you can fill out your study sheets and get to the information that is most essential for your quizzes and tests for this course. When I wrote this course a couple of years ago, I had a couple of things that I wanted to do. One was present some biological information that I feel like is valuable to you. And I present this in four core areas that we will cover at the end of this um, first lecture as an overview of where we're going. And the second thing is I really want to connect this to your life. And so a lot of those study sheet questions will hopefully be connecting and our live Zooms will be connecting and discussing these principles and practicing them um, live so that we can connect it back to our lives and why it should matter to us. So today I have a couple of goals. One is to define biology and two to give you an overview for the whole semester. So biology in short is defined as the scientific study of life. So in order to understand that, you need to know what a scientific study is and what characteristics scientists give to living things that is different than what you would give to a non-living rock or something like that, a piece of dirt or water, um, things that we would call non-life, right, or non-living materials. So I'm going to talk about those two things and then we will end with an overview for the semester. So to get going today, Let's go to our scientific study part of our definition of biology. So if biology is the scientific study of life, then scientists have to carry out these studies. Um, these studies are a little bit different than what you would do in your everyday life. I think most of us would make observations in our life. Most of us have asked questions about how our bodies work or why something is happening um, to plants and animals around us. We've even maybe had hypothesis or a prediction um, about like sort of why something is working the way that it is and maybe even a prediction of like if I do this then maybe this will happen. So all of us kind of carry out those kinds of things in our normal everyday life. But what makes a scientific study different is this idea of a controlled experiment, this last like piece of this puzzle. Controlled experiments have variables and we isolate our experimental variable keeping other things consistent um, so that we can really test um, to see what is happening in a particular scenario and then we can go back and it can inform our predictions, our hypothesis, and even answer our question ultimately. These scientific studies are not done alone. They're not done once. They're done many times, so they're replicated. And within the scientific community, um, they are peer-reviewed and peer-replicated as well. Um, so that's a little bit different than us just thinking to ourselves, like, I have this question, and I'm thinking of an answer, or I think it's working like this, and making predictions on our own. Um, scientists actually carry out these controlled experiments. Um, and the scientific community then um, sort of reviews those experiments and informs the public about what is going on. So biology is the scientific study, but the second part of that definition is of life. And so what is life? What constitutes characteristics or properties that make something living versus non-living? Um, so we say that there are seven, or I have it divided into seven different properties that living things um, have that non-living things do not. So the first thing on my list here is living things have order. And by that, I mean that living things are organized and usually complicated patterns of one or more cells. Cells are going to be our basic unit of life. They're going to be the simplest thing we can pull from a living thing that carries out these seven characteristics or these seven properties. We also say that living things have regulation. And by this, I mean homeostasis. So living things have um, the ability to highly regulate their internal environments, even when the external world is changing rapidly. So we can keep our heat, right, consistent, even when the outside environment, maybe uh, the heat and the temperature is changing very rapidly. Or we can maintain certain concentrations of chemicals internally, even if the external world um, has different you know, concentrations of chemicals around us. So this kind of regulation, this internal regulation, um, is very specific to living things. We say third on the list, living things grow and develop. So there are patterns due to genetics that enable uh, different uh, organisms to grow over the course of their lifespan and develop. So there's different patterns of development as well. Um, that follow different species. We say fourth on the list, living things can utilize energy. 
This means that living things can take in energy through different processes like photosynthesis or um, eating, right? So being a heterotroph and like eating something else. Um, we can take in that energy and then we can use it to do our life work. This might be movement or this might life work might be breaking something down and building a different chemical. Um, it can be opening gates and closing gates inside of our body. So lots of different life work that we do. We also say that living things respond to the environment. So with stimulus that happens around us, uh, living things can respond to that stimuli and um, move away or move towards something. Um, they can respond to different chemicals um, depending on the scenario. So lots of different responses and even things that you think are kind of stationary still respond. So things like plants, um, your sunflowers follow, they point their leaf uh, pieces um, and they follow the sun across the sky so that they can maximize photosynthesis. So there's some plants that can follow stimulus like that. Um, there's other like the Venus flytraps that when an insect touches the little trigger hairs, um, they can snap clothes and then dissolve those insects. So lots of different responses, um, even in things that you think are pretty stationary. Um, sixth on the list, living things can reproduce and they don't reproduce willy nilly. It's not like a cat and a dog make an alligator. Um, they're going to reproduce their same species. So hippos are going to breed with other hippos to make more hippos. And so this reproduction is very specific to living things, making us different than rocks and other uh, sort of non-living features in our world. And lastly, living things have usually bags of tricks. So, um, kind of traits that help them survive. Um, these are called adaptations and adaptations accumulate in populations due to natural selection. So populations can change over time. This idea of populations and um, these groups of organisms changing over time is very specific to life. We don't see it in rocks again and other sort of non-living entities. So biology, in this class, you are going to be studying the scientific study of life, right? Um, so you're going to be looking at scientific studies to support what is happening with these properties and these characteristics of life. So we'll be coming back to these um, throughout the whole entire semester. Um, this semester, we're going to start out big picture at the top here, looking at big uh, sort of systems and how organisms and different groups of living things are interacting. Then we will dive down into the microscopic world of cells and genetics, and then finally come back to one single organism, the human body and its form and function. So to look at our units, we are going to start with ecology and evolution. So your next uh, sort of video clip will be on ecology. Um, that's looking at the interactions between organisms and evolution is how those organisms, uh, groups of organisms are changing over time. Um, so we'll be looking at that in unit one. Unit two, we will be looking at the simplest basic unit of life, the cell and all the life work that it carries out inside of itself. The third unit, we will be looking at DNA and genetics and inheritance. So those processes that sort of guide DNA and how it functions. And the last unit is human body form and function where we tour the human body and we apply a lot of these different processes back to how it works for humans. And so this is where we are going. Um, this is your first video clip. Each video clip will have some study sheet questions that go along with it. So I highly recommend that you view these and then do those questions in order to prepare for your quizzes and exams. So I'll see you next time.